And it's next generation and network here. So a few weeks ago, and Jennifer Rexford from Princeton University, she gave a keynote speech at ACM SICOM in Budapest. She made a few statements. Do you know what? Actually, I like it. So I made some quotes here. She says that, so in the last like 50 years or more or along that, you see many innovations above the internet. For example, you have many applications there. Below the internet, so layer two, layer one technologies. And so alongside, you have cell phones, smartphone, and new applications there. But inside the network, there are not much innovation there. So right now, you see the internet. It looks pretty much as it was like 50 years ago, 30 years ago, right? So do we really need to have some change inside the network? She says, we actually, we need it. We, we are desperate to inno innovate inside. So that's her quotes. But why, we, why do we need it? Normally, people associate network with communications. Communication, you get the information. You send something from here to there. But now, time changes. The internet is not used just for communication or for art. Actually, now, people are trying to use it for other purposes. For example, here, I list a few here. New verticals demand new types of communication services, mainly for control, and also some new technologies, especially haptic technology, holographic laser display, and they are enabling new terminals. So they are coming soon, probably much faster than we initially thought. And also user demands more and more new services, new experiences. So internet is powerful, but it's not omnipotent. So there are really some limitations, Zeus. So um, I will show you. I'm actually, I'm not sure if I have uh, included it in my slides. If not, you can look at my other speeches. So and today, I'm, I'm going to talk about two things. The first, requirements. Uh, actually, and then some speakers ahead of me, they're already talked about something. Actually, I'm so happy we share some opinions there. Later, I will outline some research directions. What should we do about them? So this is a list of a few major and, uh, verticals or trends which are still going on. First, in 5G, this morning, people already, I heard that uh, AR, VR there, but the next step is holograms are coming. And I heard that like, as far as I know there, currently like in Silicon Valley where I live, one company they got more than a few hundred of million dollars just in hologram display. It's a, it's a startup, they didn't give me permission to talk about it, but, uh, but the hologram, holographic display, holographic type of communication are coming. So they pose some new challenges and new requirements here. Second, industry for the all here, it's a unified communication and control all together. They want to use the same backbone, same network, same protocol, same technology for that. So for them, latency is a big issue there. So currently, for many applications, latency is in the range of seconds. But for industrial control, the latency should go to microseconds, and sometimes milliseconds, a few milliseconds, sub-milliseconds. For tactile internet, that's, uh, that's even an interesting one. And uh, so haptic te um, technology and terminals are coming. So there are lots of applications there, for example, like a blind. So in order make a blind to feel how the life is, because she, cannot, he can, she or he cannot see it, but he can feel it. So there are some technologies there. Vehicular uh, networks are coming, so more and more like uh, cars, autonomous cars, driverless cars are being made, are being tested. So uh, it, uh, it has shown that driving uh, 
should not be like should be controlled not just by sensor, also a remote central controller. So combine them together there for some information sharing there. So latency is a big issue. And so, and how about I also mentioned that so, uh, user experiences because we like as a human being we are usually we are very greedy and we always complain, we always like whine, we are not satisfied with what we have. When we have something, we always demand more. But at all times, we are very happy with white, black TV, right? little color TV, AR, VR is fancy. But uh, suppose AR, VR installed in your living room, probably you are not feel like uh, satisfied uh, uh, with them. So you won't have something more. What are those hologram? It's not only hologram, right now digital senses are coming. So and in IEEE there, there is an initiative, it's called digital senses, now it's called digital reality. They are studying human senses, not just hearing and vision, they are also and talking, studying the touch, taste, smell. So how do you embody human senses into your media so that the user would have uh, not just the immersive, but also vivid, new, newly realistic experiences. It's so hard there, not only like latency and uh, or throughput there, but uh, as, uh, this morning, and uh, Professor Wang also talked about the synchronization there. So for some holograms there, so if see multiple people or some food here or there, so and, uh, and if the senses coming in different streams, they have to be coordinated, synchronized. So lots of change there from the media industry. And uh, so since right now, network is not only for communication, it's also for the control, for, for IoT, this morning I heard, and also for the uh, uh, user in the factory. Uh, it's becoming more and more complicated. How are you going to manage and control those? So uh, complexity and uh, human, like uh, human, like uh, management uh, and uh, factor, there is a crisis point there. After you go beyond this point, uh, you would need some automation there. For example, in the last few days here, we are uh, hearing in multiple sessions network transformation, business automation, network uh, management automation, ONAP orchestration. What are those automation? But what are the automation there? So it's a self something, like from self configuration, self organization, self optimization, like self healing, self learning. So lots of things there. So you see, when the network evolves, all these self X will coming. So and uh, that's uh, and it, it's a new demand here. So and. Um, Probably you don't need me to say more because the last few days in all this this session all people are talking about this. So next one is that this is even more interesting. So you probably think that there is one and only one internet. Actually, you might be surprised. Right now, probably there are six or even more internets here. They work independently of each other. Some internets are private. One internet is public, so, but how do you want to consolidate them together? We need an architecture and a protocol there. Currently, there's none there. For example, um, there's some disaster, tornado, earthquake. So, internet on the earth could be broken, so you could not send something else. Suppose somehow there was some regulation, private internet should be connected to your cell phone in some way if the earthquake comes. When you make your cell phone automatically, you can talk to the internet, just tell them where you are, so that people could go there to save you. But right now, if you, let's say I heard a story, like some people like were buried inside the building, so they use dogs there to search 
for some like people there. Is there any person buried inside this building? No, no. Because right now everybody carries a cell phone. But uh, if you somehow build a new like architecture here, unify them together, make some like people are talking about how can we like make something called a federated network? Should we? Uh, should that work or not? So it's up to some research. So that's a uh, uh, infrastructure change. It's coming. It's happening. And uh, another thing, and I already mentioned that, so about the holograms, now and today, probably we are just in the dawn of a new age. So it's a holographic age. Right now, people are talking about the smart city, smart X, smart Y, smart A, some smart B, C, D, so there. So smart here is mainly just connected. So after you connect to the internet, you think you are smart, you are smart. But for some real applications there, so you need uh, some like a hard tech, like a hol holographic thing there. So next, uh, probably, we are going to move from a connected society to a hologra holographic society. It may take five years or 10 years, but no matter what, it's going to come. If it doesn't come in five years, it may come in 10 years. If it doesn't come in 10 years, it may come in 15 years. But our technology is not ready. So as a, like a researcher or the teachers, professors, students here, professionals, so we should make technology ready. We should be aware of something that would happen in the new future or even in the uh, far future. So uh, this will be coming. I just list a few industries here. And uh, that's very, very, uh, some people already did some small put prototypes there, also that's not good, but they only show some concepts there. Okay, so I have um, generally outlined some um, requirements. Actually, I have some other things to prove that. So internet um, is really um, has some um, limitations. The main thing is that the internet is built on a very simple principle that is statistical multiplexing. Because it is statistical multiplexing, packets could be lost. If you want to have a reliable uh, delivery, you have to transmit it. In order to transmit it, you have to install some timer inside. So you have, uh, it's not, the latency is not just only doubled. It's it, because you need to cut the window, that kind of thing there. So as a result, you can mathematically prove that the throughput is proportionally, inversely proportional to the packed loss ratio. Maybe square, square root, that kind of thing there. So no matter it's TCP or even quick, so uh, they, they are subject to this formulation. That's the law of the internet, the throughput packed loss latency. All of them are correlated. Or even window size, maximum segment size. Right? How to break it? So here, there, and I will list a few research directions for you guys to consider if you agree with me. Uh, so uh, when we design a new internet here, actually there are like a multiple plans. Now the data plan is well started. Control plan is started, so many protocols there, it's still controllers, it's there. Management plan probably is already started, you already see OpenStack, ONAP, orchestration system there. So in order to make the work here, probably right now it's a start point of a new cycle. This new cycle starts from the new data plan. We need to add some new capabilities, new communication services to the data plan there. And for such a data plan there, we need a new type of control protocol. How to control that? For example, I'm happy to hear Professor Dr. Philip mention like a preferred pass routing. So using preferred pass routing, actually you can like create some railway, something similar railway in your network, and in a rock shower in every city. If you drive, usually you think you are fast, but it may be slow than a trolley, like a railway, maybe subway, tube, right? So why, 
Why it's slow? Because there's no congestion there. It's a, they work on a time schedule. So you have a railway inside there. So it's, it happens in our cities, in every metropolitan city. Why can't you build it into your network to support premium value-added services? Actually, you can, but the people just don't do it, right? So, and for the only mention that the self configure self optimization, all of them relate to the automation there. So, um, in the next few minutes, I'm going to focus on the uh, data plan, new capabilities. What do we really need to support uh, those new applications and to, and, uh, to meet those new challenges? So, I um, uh, classified uh, new um, capabilities in the five basic ones. The top one is the first one is, uh, I call it tactile communication services. So you may call it like a low latency or extreme la low latency communication. So it ideally it should be in the sub millisecond level. Of course, you cannot ha have as low as you wish because we are even living in a physical world. Everything is subject to physics. Right? We know that light travels uh, 300 kilometers per millisecond. So if you want to say, let's say I want to have one millisecond from the east coast to the west coast in America, probably you cannot. Why? You still, it's a subject to the physics there. But if you really look at the internet, most of the communications are happening in a metropolitan city. Probably a city, the diameter probably is less than 300 kilometers. If a city is more than 300 kilometers, it should be really, really big. Really, really big. I probably I have not seen such a city yet, unless you include all suburbs all together. Like a city here, Hague, maybe Amsterdam together, probably still less than 300 kilometers, right? Two cities combined still that. So it is still in that diameter there. So that one tactile communication. Second is called high precision communication cell. So for um, Professor um, Philip also mentioned yet, high precision networking there. And uh, here I classified into five, um, uh, three more basic ones. The first time is in time guarantee. When you control something, when you want to send something out, you want to send your packet before certain time. That's an in-time guarantee. Second is on-time guarantee. After you send a packet, you want your packet to get there no sooner, no later, exactly at some point of time, sharp. So maybe you have a small jitter, small variance, that's and uh, that uh, if it's still in the range of tolerance, should be okay. Uh, so in-time guarantee uh, can be done because in quality of services, there are so much work there, people just don't put it in a router. So on-time slightly difficult, actually more difficult. So the one is even, uh, even um, uh, so the one is most difficult one, it's called coordinated guarantees here. Because for some applications, it looks like a symphony. So like a violin, drums there. So, so it's a symphony there. So all these packets should come to a place in a coordinated and synchronized way. So that one really, um, it's hard, hard to do. It depends on how many flows, how many streams, right? So currently, IP cannot do uh, this kind of thing. And Fifth one, that's even more interesting. You cannot find it in the current internet. I call it qualitative communications. But what is that? Right now, when you send a packet, it's actually just bits and bytes. If something is wrong there, you need to resend everything. Right? For example, if you want to send a picture of me from The Hague to California to my family there, so if a bit, so some bites about my hair. My hair may be such so long, maybe it's like a dark color, right? Who cares? It's really dark or naturally dark, like uh, even gray. Who cares, right? So if some bites about it, lost it, you should tolerate it. So, but in the current internet, it's not designed that way. So what the receivers receive is exactly the same as what the senders sends, 
right? So that's the common internet. But for some future applications like a holographic type of communications, you really do not care about it. So a receiver receives something that might not be the same as what the sender sends, like me here. So if my face distorted a little bit, still okay. Like I'm so fat, make me a little thinner. I might be happy like to see such a picture or or video. So we need to introduce a new, brand new communication or capability into the uh, internet, which and, and currently it doesn't have yet. The another one is called we, people are talking about the holographic type of communication, holographic application, shopping, and education, holographic education, university, lots of there. So this is actually, it's a combination of some of the five basic services. So it depends on your like, uh, like requirement. Sometimes you need a high precision capability. Sometimes it does not. Sometimes it needs low latency and, uh, and uh, requirement. So that's uh, for holographic type of communication here. So it's uh, slightly uh, different. Actually, it's not slightly because I have done this for a few years. <laughs> I know, uh, for some like uh, um, for some experiment, I know how to do it. Uh, if you really do uh, do it from scratch, it's uh, it's really complicated uh, because it you need to re packetize the network. The packetization and uh, it would be different from currently uh, we we are familiar with by using IP packet. Uh, here I give. Uh, uh, actually, I talk a little bit more about the high precision communication here. It's some uh, mathematical definition how they should be calculated um, in terms of arrival time and also the valence of arrival time there. So um, uh, it's not that difficult, so um, it should be fairly uh, easy to understand. And so I will talk more about this in a, and actually I also mentioned something about it. Here in this picture, I compare quantitative communication. I call the common internet called the quantitative communication because every bits and bytes you send counts. The receiver are supposed and are expected to receive them. But for, for the new communication, qualitative communication, it's not like that way. So it just a receiver ex is expected to receive something and uh, you already deliver it like a, a like a conceptual maybe 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 some framework like me here so um, like um, high resolution of me or the low resolution of me should be fine and if even if you want to combine it with the teleport there, so so it's even uh, final because you can always regenerate something. You can repair the packet in a qualitative communication. If you receive a packet, something is wrong with it. It distorted, or your hologram, your picture, your image are distorted. You can repair it. You can recover it in some like a technique there. So in this case, you can reduce the latency. Because in the current network, uh, if something wrong, you have to retransmit it. There's no intelligence inside. This morning, like Philip uh, like says that. So which network is transforming from statistical multiplexing to computational multiplexing. So computation there, you can recover, repair the pack there, so that uh, you do not need to have to retransmit your packet. And uh, here I give one example here. So by using the big packet protocol, uh, big packet protocol uh, was published uh, in the ACM sitcom and uh, this year in a workshop called NEAT. Uh, it's a new and emerging application there. So uh, between the header and the payload, you ha actually have a contract. The contract, uh, um, part of the contract could be a metadata. So in the metadata part, uh, you can include your senses, your digital senses, five senses, and also you can associate some action to it. Moreover, you can even give some entropy. So entropy means the significance of some bytes or some packs, like me, like a color of my hair, it's not it's not that significant, right? So you can use some value there. So there are multiple types of an entropy, like binary, uh, multi-case, or you should define it. 
look, yeah, looks we need a high precision networking and communication there. Oh, well, maybe somebody are pull testing. I should uh, like move like quick. Okay, yeah, I I know. Uh, so uh, here is a holographic teleporter. It's a, it's an important one in the new internet. So for teleporter, there are five, uh, three steps here. The first step is a dematerialize. Third step, you need to rematerialize. Maybe a different particle there. In the second step between them, you need to ship it, deliver it. But for the hologram, when you regenerate using some laser that comes in there. Uh, so um, I give a picture about the new capabilities of the internet. So in the old internet, it had three capabilities. Uh, best effort, uh, probably more than 90% of services are best effort. Voice, uh, diff serve, traffic engineering, you can guarantee some bandwidth and a forwarding pass, maybe fast read route. But uh, I added something more there, qualitative high precision holographic teleport. So the noise is alarming me faster, so not much time left here. Uh, this is a, a new protocol stack I'm, I'm proposing for the, for the study. So it's, this concludes my talk. Hopefully this noise will be going away. <laughs> Any questions here? Uh, thanks very much. I'm just curious on um, the holograms, and I can understand, I think, why you need multiple streams uh, of video to be synchronized so that you could move around the hologram and, and, it, not, and it not be distorted like this, uh, this speaker. But um, uh, I'm not quite sure that you, you still need the, the, the low latency. So latency and synchronization are, are different things, and yet in your presentation and in many others, I keep hearing about holograms requiring very, very low latency. Applications, right? So, for 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 example, like entertainment, like you have some latency, like a little bit uh, lower, so some let's say Taylor Swift is performing, so you want to to see that in a home, like a, as a holographic display in a living room, that should be fine. But for for some other application, latency is really big issue, like uh, like streaming, like live streaming there, because. According to medical research, the, the uh, motion to photon time should be less than 20 milliseconds. In 20 milliseconds, you need to do encoding, streaming, framing, network transport, decoding, display. So if you do a reasonable time budget, and according to the latest CPU technology, you would have five to second millisecond and on your network. So in this case, latency is an important one. So how do you guarantee those in the current internet, this new technology? Because after you send a packet, routers do not know right, how much latency you, you need. So it may know your priority diff serve classes, so they don't know the latency, so nothing can be guaranteed. So in a new internet or new IP, new packet protocol, they can do something like this. So uh, I know there are lots of details behind it uh, technically because that's really new there, and uh, it, it's uh, there are some papers uh, published uh, in in recent months. Yeah. The motion Mike? sickness. People are conflating the the requirement for very low latency to avoid motion sickness with virtual reality goggles mm -hmm. with. Um, Looking at a hologram, yeah, and I don't think you have yeah. the same issue there. Right. So that, so yeah, for hologram, that's one like, uh, like, uh, uh, like, like Google cell. Others is like uh, driveless cars, right? So if you drive sixty kilometers per um, per hour, you can calculate that one millisecond. Uh, how how uh, how long? How much distance can you drive? So the latency is shorter. The you want to avoid like a car like crash, right? The chance is higher. 
So suppose you have a control to control that. So there are lots of applications of there. Others is that in, in a factory, if the latency is shorter, you can manufacture more goods, more shoes, shoes sales. So, so, so um, I can talk about this, and if, um, if you, got, you give me more time. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, thank you, uh, Richard. So uh, uh, I think uh, based on the, uh, your talk and also uh, other people's talk, it, it's apparent that in the future there will be a wide range of applications which require uh, dedicated uh, probably network support or protocol support. So uh, just name a few, uh, uh, people talk about preferred path routing or big packet uh, protocol, these kind of new technologies. So what, what, what is your view about the future uh, on the uh, network architecture support? Are you going to replace the old uh, legacy uh, protocols or how to accommodate new protocols in the common architecture? So what, what, are, the, uh, let's say, what, what are the views on, uh, on this kind of new requirement to coexist, have, have different things coexist together? Yeah, actually, it's a really good question. Uh, we can, like, uh, this is also a picture here. It's just a white slide here. So on one hand, I do not want to throw away the common internet. Okay. It's billion dollars of investment mm -hmm. there, right? On the other hand, uh, we do have new applications, new terminals there. So they are coming. Come the internet they cannot do it. So we want something new that would be required to be compatible with something that exists today. So if you look at this picture, the left-hand side, so transport still stay there, so I add the teleport there. But the, in terms of common sockets, like TCP sockets, UDP sockets, I add some interfaces. The new communication services capabilities can be implemented as a socket through the teleport part. Suppose your router implement some five basic services there I described earlier there. So uh, when I say that, you can still keep the kind of architecture, but you need new line cards, new routers there. So that in the new router, so its uh, implementation would be different. It's not just statistical multiplexing. You should add some computation to it, transform it into computational uh, multiplexing, uh, and implement those five basic services. After you have done that, the internet will not only be used for communication, it can also be used for control, for automation, right? In industry, farming, and fishing, uh, education, hospitals, health uh, care there. So that's something I could say like uh, for as of now, if you want more, I can certainly talk more because oh, constantly <laughs> allow me, it's, it's, this is really high precision. Yeah. Sure, okay, thank you. Thanks, Richard. Okay, thank you.